Charity Bowden from The Voice. She was on The Voice and she's, uh, gosh, she's done a ton of stuff we're going to talk about. Hi, thank you so much for having me. And you, uh, you are in Alabama? I am. I'm from just south of Montgomery. I just want to dive right in and we'll, we'll get to a number of things, including your Miss Alabama contest. But tell me about The Voice when you, um, you had to audition. Tell me what that was like. So, okay, my voice experience was about four years ago. It was so much fun. Um, and I truly think if I could go on The Voice again, I probably would. Um, it was truly just a blast. But I had no idea kind of going into it, what we were planning on doing. We just kind of wanted to go. And my vocal teacher had gotten me the audition. He's like, just go get some feedback. You know, you'll be good to go. And then I kind of kept making it through rounds. And so it became this joke with my mom and I when we would say, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Because um, we just kind of kept crossing those bridges. And we had no idea that any of that was going to happen. So that's um, some of the experience that I had. I loved all the coaches getting to meet them, work with Miley Cyrus and Joan Jett was awesome. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a fantastic experience. You were on the uh, team, Miley Cyrus, right? The Cyrus yeah. team? Uh, she's yeah. a little experience in, in, in TV and performing. Yes, yeah, she's very experienced in it. How was she? To, how, how was she people always ask, were they a nice person? She was, she was so genuine, so kind. I was very shocked because I grew up watching, you know, all her movies, all her TV shows, everything. And so I didn't quite know what to expect. Um, I knew what I was hoping to get. And she kind of passed my expectations. Um, she wanted to be so involved. She wanted to know what our wardrobe was. She wanted to be involved with our hair and makeup. She just wanted to be involved in everything. And they said that they had never had a coach that wanted to be as involved as she did. And sure enough, when they didn't let her be involved, they had to go back and redo stuff. <laughs> Who was the most interesting other than Miley? Joan Jett was probably the coolest. Um, I loved Blake. He was so funny. You think he's super tall and then you meet him and he's like even taller than you expected. How tall, um, how tall is he? I could have sworn that he was like seven feet, but he's apparently like six, four or six, five. No, no kidding. Jeez. Wow. I'm six two, but I mean, that's, that's on. That's up there. so tall. That's tall. That's tall. Yeah. Yeah. Man to look up to for a number of reasons. Yeah. For a number of reasons. Yeah. So what did you take away from that? What was your, what do you, what did you, how do you feel after doing that? Honestly, it, the whole experience blew my expectations because I really, I really was not expecting anything other than just to like go home and be told what to do because I had just started singing. Um, or I had been singing my whole life, but in front of people, I had just started singing for probably about a year. So I really didn't know what I was doing. I was new to the whole thing. Um, You'd only been singing in front of people for about a year? Yes. So when I was a little girl, I loved to sing in front of people. And then about the age of seven, I got really bad stage fright out of like nowhere. And for seven or eight years, I quit singing in front of people. Wow. Wow. Well, that's... That makes it even more significant. Yeah, so it was, honestly, we had no expectations um, just because I was a baby in the world of music, didn't know what I was doing, wasn't, honestly, I was trying to build my confidence and that did, it definitely did that for me. I walked away with more confidence than I had had. I learned to, um, the kind of people that I wanted to surround myself with and the kind of person that I wanted to be. And I thought that was a lot more important than anything else that it could have given me. Wow. So what would be your tips to somebody, well, I guess of any age, who uh, is lacking a little self-confidence, but has some talent? What are some tips you would give them that you use to overcome uh, your, I guess, fear of performing? Well, like yeah. to be able to go on national TV. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was kind of like, you just got to do it. Um, and also when it came to learning how to accept myself and be confident in my talents and and who I actually was um that was mostly about surrounding myself with people who accepted me for who I was too and I didn't have to try to be anyone else um my best friend to this day is from the show um and learning so much about people everybody's weird in their own way 
Um, and you're never going to have everybody like you. And I am the, I've always been the kind of person where I want to please everyone. I want everybody to be happy. Well, not everybody likes country music to begin with. <laughs> and not everybody's going to like my music. And those are two things that I really had to learn and how to accept. You're kidding. Not everybody likes country music, huh? <laughs> yes. Well, there you go. I wish they did. Well, you got to work with some significant people in country music, Charlie Daniels. Oh, that was so cool. I was amazed at the show he put on. I think he was, he was in his 80s. I think he was like 86. It was like two or three years ago, probably, that I got to open for him. And oh my gosh, he was just all over the place. Like it was crazy. And I was like, I want to be that age and doing that to that capacity. Like he didn't, he looked like he hadn't slowed down at all. It was an amazing show. And you got to actually open for him. Yes. Wow. That's it was a great experience. It was at the Op Rattlesnake Rodeo. Well, that had to be a little intimidating, I would think. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it always is, but it's it's good because it forces you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, well, you you grew up uh in the uh, the home of some famous country and western uh singers. Hank Hank Williams lived in that area, I didn't he? Yes, and I get asked that all the time. They're like, so you're from Montgomery. That's where Hank Williams is from. And actually, sitting on my um, nightstand is a Hank Williams music box. Um, and the people at the Hank Williams Museum in Montgomery are dear friends of mine. I absolutely adore them. They've done so much for me. I actually um, kind of started to meet songwriters and work with songwriters for the first time at the Hank Williams Museum. So Hank's always had a pretty special meaning to me. But where to from here? Where, what, what are your goals? Where are you headed? Ooh, I don't know. I think I'm probably going to end up moving to Nashville as soon as I graduate college. That's that's goal number one right now is graduate and be done with school. Uh -huh. And then we'll see what happens with Miss Alabama this year. Um, I adore every single one of the girls that are competing. So if I win, it was God's grace. And if not, I'm meant to do something else. Um, but I have no idea where I'm going next. And that's kind of always a fun thing. I know that I definitely want to do music for the rest of my life. So you could say there's probably a pretty good chance that I'm going to be moving up to Nashville pretty soon. Yeah, no, good place to be and pretty part of the country. Uh, so you're still, you're still in school. Yes, I am. I'm a senior. At um, University of Montevallo. Cool, cool, cool. Very small liberal arts college. Yeah. Um, and I'm in school for marketing and finance, and I will graduate in December. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations and, and, and good luck. So, uh, thank you. I will need yeah. all the luck I can get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, you, you'll, you'll be stepping out into the real world. <laughs> yeah. So, geez, I hope you can uh, hope you can make some changes to the real world. You and me both. A little, little crazy right now. I don't know that I can make any changes to the whole world, but I think I can probably do something about the one around me. Yeah, well, maybe a little bit at a time, especially with music. Music touches people and reaches out. Gives you Absolutely. Support. Yeah. And I think right now is a time when we all need to have something in common because there are so many things we can all disagree on. Yeah. And I think music is something that everybody can tend to agree on something. Yeah, yeah. You might have to find the right person, but. Yeah. Oh, one of the things I'm really amazed about is just the whole attitude towards free speech, because when I was in college and growing up, free speech was the gold standard. I mean, people could say anything they wanted. You may obviously not agree with them, but they had a right to say it. And it seems like that's changed. I don't know. What do you seems think? Seems like it has. I can definitely agree with that. And <laughs> as a writer, um, it's kind of nice because I can still say whatever I want to and write it down and put it on paper and people may never hear it, but I still said it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, tell us about the song. Well, you've written several songs. Uh, yeah. Tell tell us the, uh, about the latest song. Well, no, tell me about the first song you wrote. Ooh, the very first song I ever wrote, I wrote with my dad. Wow. Um, yes. And it was based, it's called I've been to heaven. And it was off of a letter that my great grandmother actually wrote that my dad had for years. And it talks about um, the story of her husband passing away and how she's been to heaven, but only in her dreams. Um, so wow. that was the first one I ever wrote. 
And then, then I think the first song I ever wrote completely by myself was a song called Georgia Blue. It's never been released or anything like that. Neither of those two have. Um, that's, a, that's a great name, Georgia Blue. Well, it was it was very special to me. It still is because it was the first one I ever did that I was actually like proud of and willing to sing in front of people other than the one with my dad. Those were those were the two. So they kind of started me off and then I got into co-writing with people other than my dad. Um, my dad's family grew up singing country music and gospel music. So no kidding, no kidding. Yeah, um, it was the Bowden family. It was him and three of his older brothers at the time and his two parents. Did they you know, gospel yeah. music or, or? Yes, it was gospel. And then my uncle started a band that was pretty popular in South Alabama called Silverado hmm. back in their day. <laughs> so, so, you, so you got it in your genes. <laughs> I guess you could say I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a kind of a resurgence in gospel music Southern gospel music, uh, yeah. And there was a big concert here in Dallas that a guy named Harold Marshall puts on every, uh, well, every few months actually seasonally, and brings in some of the big groups. And it's just raw talent. And some of it's like the Beach Boys on steroids. <laughs> you know what I mean with the harmony? Yeah. yeah, I love um, like traditional old school gospel music, like your hymns. That's that's some of my favorite music to sing. Yeah. Um, because it carries a lot of weight to me. And the song that I just released, Shoes, in the back half of it, it kind of talks about some of my favorite gospel songs. Um, the beginning of the second verse is, um, I love how I blank when it comes to me. Yeah. Um, but the beginning of the second verse is a couple of different um, gospel hymns that I grew up singing in church and that were my favorite. Um, and then it just kind of went from there. So I've always loved and appreciated gospel music and especially any kind of traditional hymns, especially. Yeah, yeah. Well, probably a need for that more than ever right now, I guess. <laughs> I think so, I think so. So tell us about the song that you just released recently here and uh, people can see it on, on YouTube. Shoes. Yeah. Um, you can find it on YouTube. You can find it on my Facebook, which is at Charity Bowden Music. You can find it on Instagram at Charity Bowden. And it's also on Vimeo if you just really like to watch Vimeo under Charity Bowden as well. So um, the video process was amazing. I'd never filmed a music video. I'd never, um, I mean, this was only the second song I had released on my own. So I had no idea what to expect. Um, tell me and, about the, tell, tell us about the video because it was very, I, I, I found it very interesting. It, uh, and, and, and it brought me into it, especially with the shoes the way they were positioned. Uh, but tell us about shooting that video and uh, the, the thought behind it. Absolutely. I used a guy um, out of Andalusia, Alabama, which is a town pretty much as small as the one I live in right now. Um, but he is a phenomenal talent. We're going to be working with him some more in the future. Um, and he kind of came up with a lot of the ideas. And I just knew, like, I wanted an old truck in it. And I wanted the church that my dad grew up in in it. And um, there's a town called Taylor, Alabama that I know the mayor of. He was like, why don't you come down and film at my barn? Well, we got down there and we actually ended up shooting on the outside of an old church. So the church scenes, the outside is the Tabernacle Methodist Church, which is now an architecture firm on the inside. Huh. <laughs> and the inside of the church is um, the church that my dad grew up in in Samson, Alabama. Oh, wow, wow, wow. You'd never know it was two different buildings until I told you. <laughs> no, I would not. I would not. I, I just thought it was uh, was well done and, and using the shoes and the different shoes, it, it added a little, I don't know, added to it for me. Well, yes. Yeah, so the shoes were from family, friends. I had a pair of shoes that came all the way from Iowa um, from a friend of mine that's in the Marines. And I had shoes from Georgia, from uh, my grandparents' shoes, like both of my late grandfather's shoes were in there. And that was really special to me. Um, a great aunt, just so many different shoes and friends, people who've always supported me. I just kind of asked them, I was like, can I borrow your shoes? <laughs> and yeah. they all said yes. So um, it was it was a crazy experience. I know um, definitely one I never would have expected. And I wouldn't have thought that I would have, I don't know why, but I guess I didn't really fully expect to get the support that I got from the people around me. Yeah. Um, 
I had people even that wanted to ship me shoes. Like I said, the ones from Iowa, of course, I didn't pick those up. Um, they were shipped because <laughs> Iowa's a pretty good ways from Alabama. But um, it was just amazing the amount of support that people had and they were all excited about it. And I was amazed that people remembered that I was filming a video and they were like, when's it coming out? When's it coming out? When? We're excited. We're ready to see it. And it hit, I think it's got over 30,000 views now, which is wow. insane. Yeah. And over... I think it's it's around 600 shares, which is also crazy. Um, it's not something I would have expected. So yeah. it was a nice Congratulations. surprise. Congratulations. Thank you. I cried a lot. Like I even have pictures of me sitting with my dad, just ugly crying because I was so happy and so overwhelmed at all the love and support that people were giving me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we go, tell us about your, uh, participation in the Miss Alabama contest. Oh. Yes, so I have been competing in the Miss America organization or the teen organization for about eight years now. Um, I did teen for three years and ended up being second runner up and got so many scholarships through that opportunity. And then I started competing in Miss America's organization. Um, and I was originally not planning to because my first year of eligibility was the year that I was out filming for The Voice. Mm -hmm. So I caught the very last prelim of that year and somehow won it and got sent to Miss Alabama, having no idea what I was doing. <laughs> um, and the University of Montevallo actually gives out a year of full tuition and fees to the talent winners. So mm -hmm. I made it my goal. I was like, you know what? We're going to go and we're going to win talent. There is no other option. You've got to get school finished paid for because I had gotten, like I said, I had gotten some scholarships, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't have a full ride yet. So that was always my goal. And then the next year I competed in Miss Shelby County and Montevallo gives four years of tuition to her, that winner. So my college at that point was completely paid for, except for maybe a couple of fees for a few years, but I continued to try to get my fees covered by winning talent and um, so far, we're doing pretty well. I'm not in any debt at all. Um, I've given, been awarded somewhere over $230,000 in scholarships. Unbelievable. Crazy. No Everybody thinks we're just girls oh. walking around getting judged. No. Yeah. Most of us are in it to pay for our college. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, we're all walking around getting judged. So. <laughs> You're right. We all are. But yes, yeah, so last year I was actually, I guess at this point it's been generally like two years since we've been able to compete, but I was first runner up and my goal that year was to be in the top 12 and I got first runner up. So I was blew that expectation. I was like, yeah, thank goodness. Um, but the girl who won, she's such a sweet friend. She's been competing with me since the very beginning. Um, so it was just such a special moment to be up there with her as they called out her name and just to feel all of the excitement and know that either way I was going to be happy because when they called my name out for top five, I was like, woohoo, I got fourth runner up. I'm so happy with that. And then they did not call my name out and they called it, they called out third runner up and I was like, this one's mine. I'm good for this. This is wow. Even better. <laughs> and that just kind of kept happening until they got down to first runner up and they were like, go to the middle of the stage. And I was like, okay, <laughs> this is news. Wow. I wasn't expecting this. Charity, that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank wow. you. It was, gosh, it was so much fun. And I'm so, I think aside from the scholarships, the thing that I've gained the most from that yeah. is yeah. being able to, one, that's how I got out of my stage fright is competing and trying to, um, trying to win pageants. And then I always wanted to win talent. And it took me until my very last year of teen to actually win talent at the state level. So that's always been my goal. Um, I think more so, I think I'm happier winning talent than I am if I was to win a crown at any pageant, just because that's where I put all of my work in, all of my effort in. And yeah. it's not something that I do just for a minute and a half while I'm on stage, I do it as my life. So well, I always appreciate when they um, can notice that. Yeah, you know, you've know, you been noticed and uh, congratulations again. I mean, that's just, you know, I admire anybody who gets a ball rolling in any direction and you got a ball rolling. So, but it's so hard to get the ball rolling, you know, and then it at, is. Some, at some point it takes a life of its own on, but, um, but, you know, initially the inertia is just overwhelming at times and obviously you're, you're getting the ball rolling. So way to go. Well, thank you. 
like I said, it's it's been amazing. I've learned so many skills through it that a lot of people don't think you would know. Yeah. Um, but I can sit and I can do an interview like this and I don't get nervous one bit about it. And I can, I'm not nervous if I was to want a normal job. I feel like I could go into a normal job interview and not be nervous at all and probably nail it just because I've had so much experience yeah. when it comes to interviews yeah. that you can throw any question at me and okay. it's not going to be. Well, let's see. What question can I know? <laughs> hey, listen, Charity Bowden, thank you very much for taking time talking to us. Please keep us posted on your career, and we hope to touch base with you along the way. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, and I'll see you soon, hopefully. Take care. Bye.